What if I told you that the government would give you $26,000 per employee? Ha, you would tell me, yeah, right. Or, okay, sign me up. <laughs> well, on today's episode, we are talking with Ray Roth, and he's talking about something called the Employee Retention Credit, ERC. And it's part of the CARES Act that was rolled out during COVID-19 from the federal government. And I'm telling you right now, you at your shop could be getting back money and you don't even know about it. That's right. You're going to have to listen to this episode to find out more. And hopefully you're one of the lucky winners because I think there's actually a lot of lucky winners out there and they just don't even know they've got the winning ticket. Hmm. Welcome to Body Bangin', your podcast for all things body. Auto body, that is. And now, introducing Body Bangin's host, Mickey Woods of Mickey Woods Marketing. Mickey is a former Auto Collision Center owner and is now a marketing and business development expert to shops across the globe. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Body Bangin' Podcast. On today's episode, we are talking with Ray Roth, and we are talking about something that I think is really cool. It's something that came up in, I do a group called the Collision Cocktail Hour, and it's a bunch of body shop people that get together and we chit chat about hot topics. And we were talking about employees, just getting employees, employee retention, and somebody brought up the fact of, I think if you actually retain employees, you can get federal credits or some type of credits for this, financial credits back to your business. And nobody really knew much about it. So I went straight to the source <laughs> and found Mr. Ray Roth. Ray is with Stout, he, which is a full-service financial service firm. He's been with them for about 15 years and has been working and helping independent collision centers for about five years doing this type of thing. So first of all, welcome, Ray. Hi. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, I know. I'm excited to have you on and talk about this. I'm sure you've just been so excited. This is like your bucket list item, right? <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to do a podcast and I've gotten to do two in about, about a week here. So nice. yeah. Nice. Very cool. Um, okay. So we are talking today about which I have now come to find is called an ERC or an employee retention credit, I imagine is the C. Mm -hmm. And now can you share with us like, what is that? Because we've got a lot of shops out there that are like, yeah, I have people, I've kept people. That's great. It's wonderful. But like, wait a minute, I can actually get something from this. This is, this is a whole new thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it was originally passed as part of the CARES Act stimulus, which was part of um, the the initial government stimulus at the start of the COVID pandemic gotcha. back in March of 2020. It's been modified a few times since then, okay. but what it offers is up to 20, 26000 per employee. Wow. So that adds up quick. Yeah. Um, you know, shops with, you know, 20 to 40 employees, you know, generally, um, you know, are getting multiple six figures. Larger shops uh, are getting multiple seven figures. Wow. Now, okay. So that's kind of the basics of it. How does a shop even know if they qualify for something like that? So there's there's two tests. Okay. Uh, the first test is very simple. It's called a revenue reduction test. Okay. And so you use your 2019 revenue as a baseline and you okay. compare 2020 and 21 to 2019 as the baseline. And okay. if your revenue declined by 50% in 2020 mm -hmm. and 20 or and or 20% in 2021 compared mm. to 2019, then you automatically qualify. Interesting. And honestly, I don't get involved with with the revenue test because it's so simple uh i'm not needed to do to do right. basic math right many collision shops though don't qualify mm. under the revenue reduction or don't qualify for many quarters for a multitude of reasons but mainly demand was strong and there was inflationary pressures that don't trigger those thresholds uh so the other way to qualify which is where i come in 
is demonstrating that you made modifications to your business, including supply chain impacts mm. as a result of government orders. So anybody that works anywhere close to automotive know that supply chain has been extremely disruptive yes. um, over the past couple of years. Yes. Interesting. Okay. So share with me a little bit more about what that looks like. So if first on the revenue reduction component mm -hmm. of it, if they have, if their revenue has reduced by those percentages you were talking about, I think it was like 50 and 20% or something like that, then what do they, what do they do? They don't, you were saying you're not involved in that. So they wouldn't contact you for that. How would they then seek assistance if that's the case? Right. So you you claim the credit by amending your 941 uh, payroll forms. And oh, okay. so who whoever um, has helped you prepare those forms, whether they're self-prepared or you have a local independent CPA. Accountant. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would just reach out to them. It's very simple, okay. very, very straightforward. Okay. For the test that that I do, this it's really for your audit file. So okay. when you amend your 941s and you and you claim the credit, the IRS is going to cut you a check in roughly six to 12 months is what we're hearing it takes mm. to, to process these. But they're not auditing these or saying, yes, you qualify or no, you don't. It's like when you file your tax return, you file it and then they give you a refund. And then it could be years later that they're saying, hey, we want to look into this more. Right. And so with the the test that I do, the partial shutdown and the modifications test, you know, there are some subjective aspects to it. Mm. And so my analysis is to show the IRS if they come knocking at some point that you filed in good faith and absolve you um, or at least limit you for any interest and penalties in bad faith uh, filing. Right. So now is can a shop claim both of these or just one? So it's it's just it's just one okay. one credit. Okay. Um, so that twenty six thousand. There's just two ways to go about getting it. Yeah, but you know, gotcha. since you since you say that, you know, one of the popular misconceptions when the CARES Act was originally you know put into law, you could claim only PPP or ERC. Mm. You couldn't claim both. Okay. Um, some of the modifications since then, um, you can now claim both PPP. And mm -hmm. DRC, mm -hmm. you just can't double dip on on wages. Uh, okay. um, so for most of our clients, PPP covers the 2020 period, and then they would claim ERC in 2021. Okay, um, but of that 26,000, 21,000 is for the 2021 period, and only 5,000 is for 2020. So you oh. so substantially most of the credit is is still in play. Okay. All right. And then they could potentially talk with you to find out if they had questions like, where am I at with this? Am I eligible? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. specifically what we're seeing with, with collision centers going back to supply chain again is increase in cycle time. So the time needed to complete repair orders. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's walked back to you were, you were waiting for parts. Right. They weren't available. And also um, employees, any business owner knows, and I still wonder myself, where have all of the employees gone? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because it seems like everyone is hurting. So you didn't have parts, you didn't have people. And what maybe took a, a week to uh, complete a repair is now taking 10 or 11 days. Um, right. So we're seeing anywhere between 20% to 100% increases in the time it takes to to complete a repair order. Right. And the threshold that the IRS is looking for is is 10%, what they hmm. call a nominal impact on the business, which they then define as 10%. So we it's can do relative, that all day. <laughs> yeah, it's relatively low, but yeah. um, you know, it does need to be supported with with mm -hmm. with business documentation. And so that's where you know, we we take, okay, well, everyone knows supply chain was an issue. Everyone knows labor was an issue. It's almost obvious, but how does that relate to the business? Mm -hmm. And so we look to quantify that as well. It took us longer to repair cars. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, well over the minimum thresholds as defined by the IRS. And not only is it taking longer and number of days, but most of my clients, it's taking more hours 
per repair order. Right. And it's not that just automobiles all of a sudden became more complicated in the last year or two, which I mean, they have been for yeah. you know a long time now mm-hmm. becoming more sophisticated, but it wasn't an overnight thing. It's, you know, the parts, it's the people, but then you're also spreading the shop out farther to, to social distance. You're not letting people share, share tools anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, some people are saying instead of like the junior mechanic, you know, walking over to the more senior mechanic and asking a question, they're texting back and forth. <laughs> right. You know, which is just just inefficient. So yeah, longer days, longer hours. And then also most collision shops work with insurers, either through direct repair programs or or independently. And all of the work that a claims adjuster used to come on site and do, take pictures and do paperwork, that essentially all fell to shop owners. Yeah. They're taking their own pictures, they're doing more, more paperwork. Correct. And we're hearing, you know, it took, you know, between 15 and 30% longer just to file the claim um, and then up to maybe twice as long to actually get paid uh, right. with all the adjustment the the insurers were making. Yes. So we look at like about 100 uh, different aspects. Um, you know, we go pretty detailed. But yeah. the, the, the things I like to talk about clients when I pre-qualify for lack of a better word is I like them to look at their cycle time mm. um, and I want to understand about their their dealings with insurance companies. Okay, so this is interesting and it may be a dumb question, but it's called like the employee retention credit, but yet we're mm-hmm. talking about cycle time and we're talking about parts and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So how do the two relate? Yeah, so way back in March 2020, when you know the world was ending and um, <laughs> right. the bottom was falling out of the right. stock market, you know, uh, federal government stepped in and said, "Okay, you know, we're gonna shut things down. We're not naive to know this isn't gonna damage your business, yes. but we don't want to expand the problem with everyone getting laid off and unemployment skyrocketing." So this is a, was a way for the government to stop that type of financial freefall and incentivize businesses to keep their employees on payroll. Mm -hmm. Um, But then, so, but to tie it back to COVID and, you know, the harm they knew they were causing, it's, you know, either plain and simple, if you meet the revenue thresholds, then we're going to just take your word for it. We impacted your your business, but otherwise... Mm -hmm is we want you to demonstrate how the government COVID orders that were issued, how they did impact your business. And then that's where I come in and that's where we talk about cycle time and insurers um, and the things we've been discussing. Hey, would you like to increase the number of cars in your drive? Well, look no further. The Mickey Woods marketing team provides collision center specific marketing. We use proven techniques to not only increase your sales, but put money in your pocket. Visit us at collisioncentermarketing.com or you can find my personal contact information in the show notes. And let's get your 2022 off to a body banging start. So it doesn't really actually have to do with a business retaining employees for a long period of time, even though that's what the title makes it seem like it is then. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, the 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 spirit of it, I think, was to let business owners, hey, if I keep people on the payroll, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Gotcha. You know, what happens in reality is shop owners, they specialize in fixing cars and they rely on their advisors, you know, to tell them what, what money is, is available. Yeah. Um, and so the government accountability office, the GAO, they recently issued a report um, finding that roughly only 7% of business owners that are eligible for COVID stimulus has actually claimed it. Wow. Um, and they they were kind of unkind to the IRS saying that they did a bad job of marketing this and making people aware of it. I'm sure there's people at the IRS saying, when has it ever been my job to market <laughs> this? Um, but, you know, that's the takeaway is, you know, businesses went kind of about their business and now they're finding retroactively, you know, that they could qualify for it. But those that did the right thing, um, at least to the best of their ability and tried to keep people on payroll and employed, Mm -hmm. and we hear it all the time, like, 
Yeah, we weren't that busy, but so, you know, we painted the shop. Um, right, right. You know, we, 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 we found things yeah. for people to do. Right. And so a lot of those businesses, even though they didn't know, you know, that there would be this financial reward, um, you know, are getting rewarded because if they kept one person on payroll, they get up to 26,000. And in, in reality, we're seeing between 15 and 20,000 is generally the, okay. the actual payout. There's, there's a lot of variables that go into that, but. And then is it, is it you and your team that helps figure out what that number is? And then do you guys like do a filing and then submit it? Yeah. Great question. So my role is I just quantify the business impacts. Okay. Um, and, and prior to COVID, prior to ERC, I was, I'm, I'm a different type of CPA. I, I am a CPA. I'm also a certified fraud examiner. Um, mm. But I didn't. I didn't file taxes. Um, I didn't do any um, more traditional reviews, audits. Um, I quantified damages in complex mm. litigation mm. Um, and investigated fraud. So I looked at a causal event. And mm -hmm. I put a dollar sign in front of it. Mm -hmm. Laws and lawyers always win or lose the day in court, but I would say how much. Right. When ERC came along and this partial shutdown test, I kind of a perfect fit for it. Um, and, a, and a rare exception in the CPA profession is I'm used to putting a number on a causal event mm -hmm. in litigation. Mm -hmm. That's the alleged actions of the defendant. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's the impact of government uh, COVID orders. Right. Um, so I, sorry, I feel like I might be rambling a little bit. So I only, I stay in my lane. <laughs> I only, I only do the impacts. Okay. Um, and then we either work with shop owners, existing accountants okay. that would quantify the credit amount mm -hmm. based on the number of employees and how much they were paid backing off PPP, who's eligible, who's not. That's another niche. Or there's also firms that that we partner with to do that, or they work with their own CPA, but I stay in my lane um, looking at the causal impacts. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to picture in my mind what this process looks like. So it's, and it's very interesting. And it is frustrating though for a business to think, oh my gosh, there's money that I could have had. I guess the benefit is we're talking about it today <laughs> and it is still available. Absolutely. And there's, and there's a lot of confusion because the rules have been changed three mm. times since they were originally issued. Right. And your 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 more traditional CPA, they have a very broad knowledge of the entire tax code. They're right. doing your entire taxes. You know, we're looking at very narrow issues in yeah. our specialization. And, you know, a common there, there, there there's a a, a lot of misconceptions, but a lot of times when we talk to a prospective client, they'll say, well, I talked with my CPA about this. I don't qualify. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just a misunderstanding. And so mm -hmm. we always say, well, we'd love to talk with your CPA, you know, CPA to CPA. Yeah. Um, and more often than not, you know, we leave the conversation with that CPA saying, yeah, you know, I'm not comfortable. You know, I looked at the revenue test. They didn't qualify for the revenue test, but it's not within my wheelhouse to do this partial suspension test. And so we end that conversation of, yeah, we think this is a good claim for specific client, but I've got 50 other clients, you know, I'd like to put you in touch with. Yeah, that's interesting. So if somebody's out there listening and thinking, oh my gosh, wonder if I, you know, if this is me, are they talking about me? How many thousands of dollars am I going to get back? Uh, what What do you recommend they do? What would be a first step? So, you know, the first step is, you know, before you start seeing dollar signs, you know, yeah. is think about how you, how you may qualify. You know, if you have a, a big revenue reduction, that's simple, you know, that's straightforward, you know, Otherwise, I would love to talk with you. Okay. Um, you know, I could send you a, a link, Mickey, to include with this podcast, you know, so we could walk through cycle time and the insurers and, you know, the other metrics that that we look at, mm -hmm. you know, to see to see if we have a claim. Um, and, you know, I like to have a conversation with people you know, before I just take their money. Um, we do refund money if if we if, if we don't think they have a good claim. Okay. We have our our process, we have an online portal and an online questionnaire. Okay. And so once we review how people um answer our our responses, we could very quickly determine of 
you know, hey, yeah, we think this is a good claim. We're going to move forward or, hey, we better talk to these people, maybe clarify some items because we're not seeing it. Mm. Um, you know, ultimately, if if we don't think it's a good claim and we try to clarify and we still can't support it, we will uh, refund money. But yeah, the first step would be let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. I think you know, we'll talk about some of the things we're talking about now in a little more detail, talk about what documents are available to to support it. And mm-hmm. then we would direct you to, to our questionnaire. Okay. And then our work product is generally a 25 to 30 page report. It's pretty detailed. It walks wow. through what the ERC program is, um, mm-hmm. IRS guidance on it, how mm-hmm. we're interpreting the guidance. We do a lot of industry background because the key to all of this is tying it back to government COVID orders. And so right. when you talk supply chain, yeah, it's obvious there was supply chain, but you need to unpack it a little bit of domestic manufacturing. Well, auto was essential. So their shutdowns were were short, um, even though they right. were essential. They did have to shut down for short periods of time because they had to comply with social distancing and gathering restrictions and other... Well, there was different levels of shutdown, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then when they did all that, then they had to re PAP and revalidate all their machines and processing. Very, very few assembly lines were set up imagining six feet of space. Um, you know, so there were some <laughs> shutdowns in the beginning. Right. Um, when they when they came back, nobody came back at a hundred percent capacity. You're competing with yes. unemployment. Right. You got people quarantining, you got childcare issues. So, you know, we um we unpack, you know, kind of all that freight and logistics and how everybody was impacted. And then we go into a specific analysis um based on information our clients gave us of how of how they were impacted. And so that is meant to say, okay, there were there were impacts, and then for which quarters? Because whoever mm-hmm. is calculating the actual claim amount, they need to know, is it, you know, just March of 2020 or is right. it, um, you know, six quarters of 2020 through 21? Right. Okay. So and now is there a fee for you to even have a conversation with a shop? No. Okay. No, but that's, that's you know, what we consider business development time. Okay. Um, you know, we want people to feel comfortable with us. Yeah, the yeah. initial conversation is free. Um, if they go in and register through our portal, um, you know, they are asked to to pay a small fee. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's $100 per employee or a mm-hmm. minimum of $5,000. Okay. Um, so we think we're we're very competitive. But like I said, if we... If we don't feel like we could help you, we don't want people to feel ripped off. We will 100% refund. Um, I even have a client that he was on the minimum edge of qualification Mm -hmm. and said, hey, I'm comfortable issuing this. There's some that I don't want my name on. I don't want my my firm's name on, so I'm not going to issue. This one, I was comfortable issuing, but it was the bare minimum mm-hmm. of of what would qualify. And so I said, "Hey, it's it's your choice. If you want a refund, um, you know, happy happy to do that. Um, you know, otherwise, I'm happy to move forward." Right, right, okay. So that way, it kind of gives. I just want to be really clear and transparent with people that are listening, mm-hmm. so they're we're not like you know this bait and switch kind of thing <laughs> that everybody Absolutely. knows what they're getting into. Yeah, absolutely. So Stout, the firm I work for, we've been in business for 30 years. Uh, we want to be in business for a lot longer. Yeah. I want to be right. um, gainfully employed by them uh, for a <laughs> long time. So, you know, we're, we are doing everything on the up and up, want our clients to feel good. We've actually um, hired an independent attorney. We've had internal counsel mm. look at this, but we had a former DOJ prosecutor um, and his partner, who's a former IRS enforcement agency, look at our process and beat it up and say, you know, do you agree with our interpretations? Because mm-hmm. the CPAs and financial advisors, we feel very good about the analysis right. that we were doing, but it's laws essentially, um, you know, that need to be interpreted. Um, and so, you know, we said, you know, we're doing a lot of these. I've done several hundred um, of these claims, actually approaching nearly a thousand now. Um, with that type of value, we want to yeah. say, hey, you know, we don't want to just think we're doing this right. <laughs> yes. Um, we want to know. And so they've actually issued us what's called a substantial authority mm-hmm. opinion, mm-hmm. Uh, meaning they they agree that what we're doing, you know, is in compliance with the laws that actually created these programs. That's really cool. I like that. That's always the concern. Anytime we're trying to get money from the government, it's like, oh, it sounds so good, but is this going to bite me in the ass later? 
<laughs> you well, know? Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's the first question from everyone is this seems too good to be true. It's right. Like when right. do you ever get free money? And the other thing, this has only been around for, since March of 2020. So, you right. know, even the foremost experts have only been working on it for 18 months. Right. And we're using the parameters of what, yeah. you know, the IRS, the guidance that's been been put in place. But nobody could say I've been doing this for 20 years right. because it hasn't right. been around. Well, what do you think about them potentially changing it again since they've already changed it three times? Is this kind of something like, let's get on this while the parameters are what they are because it might change again kind of thing? You know, so we have we have clients that say, well, you know, what's the time frame on this? Right. And you have three years to amend your 941s okay. to do this. So there's not an immediate rush. Okay. Um, and we don't want everyone, anyone to feel pressured. Oh, I got to do this right now. But then we always say the only risk is the government shutting this down. Well, which, yeah. Which would require an act of Congress. Um, you know, we 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 follow it pretty closely. Mm-hmm. We haven't heard that that's even being considered. But you know, as we're talking about inflation and pumping money into the economy, totally. you know, that you know, it is. That's what it would make me there. a little nervous. Just kind yeah. of the state of finances today of the U.S. Like, if they're giving out money right now, you probably should take it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that's my thing personally. This is not the views of Ray Roth. These are the personal (laughs) views of Mickey Woods or a body shop business. This is personal (laughs) views of Mickey Woods. But yeah, it's and it's all really interesting. I think it's great to have people like you out there because oftentimes we don't find out about things until they're long gone. And I know a lot of body shops were trying to apply for PPP and then couldn't get it. And the website portals were shut down and, you know, and then they stopped accepting it. Then they opened it up and it was like, uh, uh, uh. So at least now here is an opportunity to at least check it out. Now, question for you, is there a certain number of employees that a shop has to have to qualify for this? Because there are small independent shops that maybe only have like two to 10 employees. There's not there's not any minimum number to to claim it. Uh, okay. There is a maximum per the program of 500 employees. Well, um, yeah. I have okay. not run into that limit yeah. with um, with the body shop. I I actually have one that is fairly close to wow. that, you know, multiple locations right. s- sort of thing. But there's no, there's no minimum. Okay. But, you know, when you talk about my fees of, of 5,000 and then another CPA is, let's say it's, it's right. 5,000, you know, you do get to diminishing returns. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to get a twenty thousand dollar credit, only claiming one employee, and you know you're, you're paying ten thousand um, right. up front, you know you still got ten thousand on the table, but you know it's not it's not quite the windfall. Um, right. So it's just it's just a judgment, you okay. know, call of the shop owner. Okay, so that's kind of stuff that I'm sure you would go over with them in the call. Absolutely. So you, they can then decide what's best, what they feel like is best for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is really great information. Honestly, I thought you were going to tell me something totally different. And that's why I ha- I didn't even reach out to you before the call because I love learning as the people listening and watching are learning because I get to ask the questions that pop into my mind that I know other people are thinking. And you know, you hear about employee retention credit and we're thinking, oh, we get credit because we've had this person on payroll for maybe 20 years. That seems to be what, that's what I thought. And I think Mm -hmm. that's what other people have thought too, where that's actually not what we're talking about here. (laughs) No, a little different. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a little different. It's not bad. It's just different. So, well, I appreciate this. I think this is great information, good information for anybody listening, because even if you're not a shop owner, you can take it back to the owner because this could be a great opportunity for them. And for the shop, I think shops have been beat up and bruised by all this COVID-19 craziness. So to think that there might be a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a win there that maybe they didn't know they could get. That's that's exciting, I think. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the shops that I've that I've talked with, you know, some are doing better than others, but you know, if you're talking about, you know, a 20 to 100% increase in cycle time, that means a 20 to 100% increase in the time that you need to get paid. 
Yeah. You know, you need to make your payroll every two weeks or people stop showing up for work. Yeah. Um, and so it's a lot of a lot of shops are really hurting. Um yeah. and their cash flow has been spread exactly. really thin. And and this has been a huge, huge help to them. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, I am going to put all of your notes in the description, all of your contact information in the description here. So if you're watching, if you're listening and you even want to explore this, you can reach out and talk to Ray. I'll put a link to the website so you can check it out and see if this guy's legit or what. (laughs) Uh, But it, this is a federally funded program. So it's not just something we're making up that we're just that this, you know, that Ray's throwing out there that just him and his organization thought up. Uh, this is something that's legitimate and there are shops out there taking advantage of it. So if you choose Ray or decide to go somewhere else, I definitely recommend you at least look into it because you could be due some money. And who doesn't like money? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for coming on, Ray. I appreciate having you. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, again, all the information's in the recording notes and we will see you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.